So people have drawn parallels between yeah. what's happening in financial markets today, the amount yes. of risk taking, the yes. nature of the risk taking, the reach for yield, the flood of foreign capital yes. into particularly uh, U.S. financial assets. Yes. Drawing a parallel between that and what happened before the financial crisis. Yes. Now, the conditions look very similar. The con well, we have a lot of a uh, lot of debt, but debt uh, has shifted from private to public. Yes. Which is worse. Because public debt doesn't go away. Private debt, you can always turn it into equity or punish You the can people. restructure. Yeah, exactly. But private debt is generated not by people who are responsible for the debt, but there by civil servants. There is more public debt, service. but there's still an awful lot of debt on corporate balance sheets there, today. They are. There, there, and there a is growing amount. Growing, but I'm worried about public debt. I, my, uh, my idea is I'd rather be very poor at the timing. <laughs> And good at the hedging, all right? So you want you want that's to be your hedged. business. Yeah, that's my business, but that's also you know my philosophy in life. Okay, you don't want to ha try to depend on specific predictions of catalysts for that crisis. It can happen in an hour, or it may take uh, years, all right? But definitely, we are in a precarious situation. I don't know when that malfunctioning plane will crash, but it will eventually crash. So you need some kind of protection from tail hedging that is done intelligently, not like foolishly, or stay out of the financial markets, which is what we recommend people. Now, yeah. okay, so we're actually getting down to the yes. advice part of the yes. conversation. Yes. So if you're a professional investor and you want to take risk, you want exposure, you need to have, you believe that one needs to have tail risk protection and the not, catastrophe insurance. If you know how to do it, if you don't know how to do it, stay buy out it. Of it. Or buy it. it, you can buy it. You can. Not, it's not easy because a lot of people think they deliver it and they run out of money quickly or something. Okay. It is a very delicate situation. I recommend that individuals stay you out of the market. You pencils down. Get pencils out. down unless you know how to hedge. All right. And 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 few people do. And few people do. Because so at this stage of yeah, the game, you yes. would recommend that people have no exposure to financial assets? Uh, listen, uh, you, you're not obligated to have exposure to financial assets. Of course you're, not. It's not prudent. That's well, people idea. want to save for retirement. I understand, but you want to save for retirement. That's not prudent, you know, because you got to look at both sides of the story. You may end up with no money. What's the prudent, allo money What's is the prudent more allocation then? If you're at the moment, if you're trying to save for I, retirement, I, cash? I, what I'm saying is that I engage in financial markets if and only if I have tail hedge protection and it's done right. Otherwise, don't engage in financial markets. Even in treasury and bonds or bills? No, especially treasury bonds. Interest rates, the upside from interest, you know, from, from, uh, from, from holding a bond, the upside is limited and the downside is... Uh, so at what point in the investment cycle does it make sense for people, individuals, to hold financial assets? To hold, I mean, I would say I would, I'd rather have very low return or close to no return than have a huge negative return. Well, sure. Catastrophic loss. You can't, nobody can exactly, recover, recover exactly. from catastrophic loss. So a loss. lot of people wished in 2007 and 2008, uh, early 2008, a lot of people wished they had no investments. What those. about these poor public pension funds with defined benefits that have to generate, I, okay, you know, a, actuarially a 7 or 8% return every year? Tail risk hedging is necessary for these people. So they don't, because the problem is if you, if you have a crisis, then, then you have to generate much higher return later so you need to be able to uh, have higher exposure to uh, risky assets coupled with more tail risk protection so in other words you need to be able to generate something in the double digits to okay. survive in to, other to, words if you have the, the point that, that we've looked at markets what tend to happen is that markets go up and then crash and then so they crash you want but net net they're good okay but to be able to sustain a crash to, to live if through you the cycle. Probably, you, you could probably take more risk if you have the right protection or the right hedging. As opposed to being conservative and just trying to generate a, exactly. a consistent conservative, 6 or 7 Conservative or in the middle doesn't work well. You should have a portion of your portfolio in, higher, in, high, exactly, in higher risk, but then have good protection against that high risk done properly. It's not. It, it, a lot of people think they can call a broker, buy puts, and it's done. It's much harder than that.